Yes, I, I can. I, Chief Goodland, did you have that available on the desktop? So th thank you for, for the question, and um, on the, uh, regarding the, the last topic, I just would uh, encourage the commission to uh, think beyond just storage of uh, these animals, but also disposal of the animals. So uh, keep that in mind as we continue this conversation into the future. So w what I have uh, regarding th the deer harvest is uh, have quite a bit of information here, and this is impromptu, so I, I'll, I'll move fast unless you slow me down. Um, just a, a word that this is uh, preliminary information. There, there really hasn't been a, uh, a true analysis of this information. It's just the numbers and uh, just a little bit of a report on that. But you, you see here the uh, deer total harvest uh, that we have reported as of now. There'll be some more uh, information come in the farther along we get from the end of deer season, uh, just because we have record, records that are outstanding uh, from deer that were checked in at check stations and, um, and then so, in some special circumstances in counties where uh, the, uh, the person checking in the animal was not accessing the uh, website or the electronic methods that we have for check-in so there'll be some more come in but uh, you, you'll see here in uh, 2017 the figure of one, one, 145,000 roughly which was um, a slight decrease from the from the previous year and you see the harvest broken down there by gun harvest archery muzzleloader uh, and then the antlered male and doe harvest and then the antlerless male harvest and uh, just probably the thing that stands out the most there is the muzzleloader harvest decreasing uh, and that was uh, if you remember opening weekend you can probably uh, understand uh, some of that because of the the hot weather that we had uh, a little bit of a, a graphic here for the harvest comparing the last two years it's basically the same information you you just saw uh, presented differently and uh, this is the, uh, a snapshot from uh, 2007 through this past deer season. And you'll notice a 10 year average there of 163. And uh, you'll see that we fell short of that at 145 this past season. And uh, deer, deer harvest for the Unidale private land season, uh, the five day hunt. And this graphic, for me, this is upside down. So pay close attention here. but. Uh, the most recent harvest for that five-day hunt was just shy of 1,300, and uh, you'll see that that decreased from 2017 and from 2016. And finally, if just to see a trend here of that of the unit L doe harvest. Now this is uh, for the entire deer season, so this would include archery, muzzleloader, gun, and the private lands only hunt, the five-day hunt you'll see the, what the doe harvest, how it's trended over time for those same years. Any questions? Yes, sir. I've got one. Do you go back and look at weather conditions, temperatures, uh, the phase of the moon and things like that? that that's, not, that's not something that we've done traditionally. However, um, there's the opportunity for that, obviously, and I think there'd be some intriguing findings there. So I would anticipate us doing that in the future, and likely with this past year. Yes, sir. I mean, and maybe I'm not a very good hunter, but uh, it seems to me like when I've got a full moon, if I stick to traditional strategies, I don't see as many deer. And I, I don't know if other people see that or not. I'm just a, just a curiosity.
Would it, um, in your opinion, would it be safe to assume that the uh, antlerless rule we adopted two years ago has affected the doe harvest? It'd be premature of me to, to share that at this point. Uh, just, uh, and, and frankly, I'm the wrong person to, to comment on that just because uh, I'm not as, uh, intimate, as intimate with this data as James, our dear program leader, is. And he just, there just hasn't been time to do that level of analysis uh, on, what, uh, on the impact of that regulation change for this past deer season. But you'll recall, you know, we, there was, there was some noteworthy um, results last year that we wanted to um, look at further to maybe to see if there's a trend. And it'll be interesting to see the results of that once this data is uh, fully analyzed. I think you can see a trend. I'll let you draw your own conclusions there. Chuck, I ask uh, James and Mark to, when we look at this, I'd like to see 10-year averages on everything. I mean, it's easy to do these days with our IT department, but but even county by county, because, you know, we had an EHD uh, outbreak, which is certainly going to represent some of this problem and so we like to look at everything based on a 10-year average yes sir. so that would really help so okay. but just so everybody knows that, that that's common so. and to piggyback on that the last time we had a promoter doing anything was buck limits you know he got to get all upset the last time we had a two buck limit the dough harvest went up almost immediately so it'd be nice to compare like 98 99 or whatever the dough harvest when this buck And you're right, there's going to be that, you, you lose, you know, we went from three to two, so you're going to lose some on that as well, naturally, to shooting less bucks, which, of course, there's only a small number of people who shot the third buck when we had three. Yeah, I'm not talking about bucks. I'm talking about when we went to two bucks before in 2000 or 1999 or whatever, the doe harvest went up, yeah. and that was anticipated this time, and it, it's not happening. Well, I've heard comment that it's because we – went to the, we changed the antlerless thing, and people are afraid to shoot the doe, thinking they might get a buck and have to tag it. So I've, I've heard that from lots of people. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But. Any other comments from the commission? Just a question. How long will it take uh, you guys to analyze these numbers? Well, that work will, will begin soon. You know, again, we've got to allow for all the data to be there to do the analysis. And, you know, it, you, you could anticipate a, a full report on it in conjunction with season setting, which is right around the corner. So if we, if we just stick to that uh, tradition, then there would be a full report in April. Thank you. Any comments from the audience? Well, thank you very much. We're going to go out of order here. I'd like to uh, recognize Commissioner Cox with the Retention and Recruitment Committee.